Coming up next on Hands on Windows, I'm going to take a look at several Windows 11 features you may have missed because they're brand new and because of the way Microsoft just kind of slips these things in all the time. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and this week I'm going to take a look at several new features that are appearing in Windows 11 as I record this. Um, the interesting thing about Windows, of course, these days is that it's never clear when you're going to get this stuff. So if you're on Windows 11 22 H2, which is still supported, or Windows 23 H2, which is the current version mostly, or version 24 H2, which you could have either because you bought a Copilot Plus PC, uh, those Snapdragon X based PCs that launched in June 2024, or because you use the tip that I wrote a few months ago about how anyone can install it on any computer. These things are all functionally the same thing. They have the same set of features. Um, they also have the same set of problems, which is that because of the way Microsoft deploys these new features, they're not everywhere. Um, one of these features I went and I went to, I think, seven or eight different computers before I started this to find a to find a version of where it worked. I, I couldn't find one. So, I mean, this is just the way it kind of goes. But um, the, the interesting thing about this is that Microsoft could ship new features and often does every single month. Right. And so just between recordings of this show, we're getting new features in Windows 11, no matter which version you have um, all the time. So I thought it might be interesting to go over some of these because there, many of them are subtle and hard to find. You might not see them or even know they exist. Um, and then if you're on Windows 23 or 22 H2, um, plus or minus a couple of weeks of this recording, you're gonna be getting all those features that were at one time unique to 24H2, right? So the Copilot standalone app, the show desktop button is back on the taskbar, those new zip formats, the uh, uh, the new labels in the context menus that should have always been there in Windows 11, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is not that, This is these are other new features, right? Okay, so the first one is in one of my favorite apps, Notepad. And Notepad has been around since 1985, since the first version of Windows, right? And so it's a basic text editor, but it has gotten spell checking in a recent update that just kind of happened. So I could say I will make a mistake and I'll misspell that. And you can see the little red dots, just so similar to what you might see in Microsoft Word. And if you right click that, you get this menu where you have different options related to spell checking, um, but you can also just single click it to do an autocorrect um, replacement so I can get that spelled correctly. Um, this is now uh, available as a set of options in the settings interface as well. So spell check can be on or off and then you can enable it or disable it for different text-based document formats like text, obviously, but also markdown and some others. And uh, autocorrect is also something that can be enabled or disabled um, as you prefer. So that's kind of cool. And I don't need to save that. <laughs> so there's that one. Um, this one is not going to be a great demo probably, but uh, the Photos app is being updated really regularly now. Actually, the better way to do this is to load an image. So let me go to the pictures folder and I'll open this guy here. And they're starting to add integrations with other apps and services in Windows. So this OneDrive integration and ClipChamp, that's been available for a little while now. The new one is Edit an Image and Designer Online. And so Microsoft Designer is a web app. You can actually install it locally. In fact, I think it is installed locally on this computer. Um, that is tied into the Copilot services, right? This is where the image creation capabilities in Copilot come from. Um, but Microsoft Designer, the web app, is primarily a Canvas style web designer type app, um, something, you know, back in the day we would have used desktop publishing for. So it has all these things related to uh, visuals and creating logos and creating flyers and things like that. Um, as far as app or uh, image editing goes, they, they have some AI features like generative erase, which I will try, but I know it's not going to be fantastic on this type of an image, but you can see, yeah, you can see it will like auto select for you. And then you can try to erase that object, which I'm holding in my hand in this photo. Um, background removal, of course, blur background, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a bunch of stuff like that. 
that's moving nice and slow, but we're running <laughs> against the cloud here. And boop, that looks, now my hand looks weird, but it did work. That's fine. Um, and then they have some just features built into the editor here. Um, one of the more interesting things here, and it's not coming up for this image, so let me try a different image, is these ideas, right? So I know, I think with this one, it will probably come up. Um, just double click it and then open that in designer. And this is related to that new, you know, uh, web designer type functionality where um, you can go in and uh, it will give you, oh, it's not doing it right now actually. So, but normally you'll see a strip of ideas based on this image. And so it will, you know, here's like a version where it looks like an old Polaroid or whatever. So um, kind of a fun thing. And this is the way Microsoft is doing new apps now, right? We're not really doing native apps uh, per se as in Windows and especially not in Microsoft 365, but um those apps are now web apps. And so designer is of course a web app. Um, a couple of changes, I guess this is three or three and four, depending on how you want to count it, uh, to the start menu. The first one is something they're calling an account manager, which is kind of a, a silly <laughs> name for this, but you can see it says I have an important account notification. It's not particularly important. They just want me to enable OneDrive folder backup. So this is yet another place where they can annoy me about this thing that I do not want to do. Um, you, I can have them remind me later and that little orange color you know, button here will go away, but I can't actually, well, no, actually I can't. I'm going to show you how to turn it off. Um, the other thing you might see is in recommended, uh, they're going to have suggested or what you might call recommended apps. And so they'll recommend apps that are in the store so that if you click on it, it will download it from the store. Now, neither one of these features is particularly interesting or exciting to me. And the good news is you can turn them both off. So if you go to the settings app, personalization, start, you will see uh, these two options right here are the ones related to what's your what we just saw, at least one of the two. So show recommendations for tips, app promotions, <laughs> and uh, and more is what will show the recommended app or the suggested app. And then this show account related notifications is <clears throat> what will uh, hide or show those, um, those silly annoyances. <laughs> so, um, but you know, maybe, maybe you need those kinds of things. Um, this is a, another example of one where it's just not, most of the new features aren't on this computer yet between the computers I have, I have two or three of these, depending on which one I'm looking at, but we've talked about the share interface a lot. And when you bring this up, what you see here will be somewhat dependent on how you've configured your computer and how, um, or which apps you've installed, right? And so you could select someone, one of these things here, and this will send an email using the outlook app uh, to that person. If you have nearby share turned on, um, you can share that to a different computer, either a computer of your own or someone else on the same Wi-Fi network. And then you can share with apps. So the things that's changing here is Microsoft is actually starting to add a lot of apps to here, even when you don't have them installed. So on this one, when you only see WhatsApp, but there are others like Facebook Messenger is one of the other ones. And if you click this here, it will install WhatsApp the first time, and then it will just put it there. Um, so you can share via WhatsApp going forward. Uh, but there are two other new features coming that we don't see here. One is just copy, which is copy to the clipboard. And that will allow you to paste that, uh, whatever that item is elsewhere. So if it's a file, for example, you might want to uh, uh, move it or copy it to a different location. You could do it that way. Um, the second one is just that thing that we all do when we want to share something with ourselves, send email to yourself. And so depending on what you've configured as your default email, client and a default service, it will use that and you'll just email it to yourself, which is basically all we ever do anyway. So that's fine. Um, this is another example of a feature that uh, is going through an interesting transition. So Windows 11, I want to say since version 22H2 has had a feature called smart app control. Uh, most people don't know about it or know anything about it. It's hidden in this Windows setting, settings app under app and browser control. This particular computer has been up and running long enough that it's actually disabled, it's off. And once you turn this feature off, you can't turn it back on, which is rather strange. Although there are workarounds to that that involve the registry, you can actually flip a switch and it will kind of come back on. But until now, this thing has shipped in evaluation mode. And what the, I should explain what the feature does is it uses heuristics to look at apps that it doesn't know anything about to determine whether they might be malicious or untrusted in some way. And if it is, if it's found to be, it will use um, uh, the built-in controls that Windows has had now for probably 10 or 15 years to just prevent it from running, 
and there's a, there's an interface where you can bypass that if you know that it's safe. But um, this is going to be enabled by default going forward. So the default behavior for the past year, year and a half, while Microsoft has kind of tested it out in the world, has been to put it in evaluation mode. If you don't enable it, if you don't ever need it, it will just turn off. And once it turns off, there's nothing you can do about it. But going forward, it's just going to it's going to be on. So this is going to be a new on by default security control in Windows um, that you're not going to see mostly unless you get a new computer or reset your computer. But that's a change. And it's super subtle. It was super subtle to begin with. But a lot of people just don't know about that one. Um, if you're familiar with the lock screen, you probably know uh, from moving from Windows 8 to 10 to 11, they've kind of detuned some of the functionality of the lock screen. We don't really get a lot of the status notification stuff that we used to get. Um, and now in Windows 11, they're starting to turn a little bit of that back on. Um, they started by adding a weather tile to the middle bottom of the lock screen. And now they've added other tiles. So now there's uh, finance and sports. And I want to say one more. Um, What's the fourth one? Oh, traffic, right? And so these things are similar to the tiles you might see in the widgets interface, right? Um, I have traffic and weather here. So they're going to look like this. They're they basically like this rectangular type tile. Um, I can't show you that on this computer because, you know, I'm using the computer, but I did take a, or Microsoft, I took a picture of the Microsoft deck actually, and I can at least show you what that looks like. So you can see them down here. Here's the four tiles. They look a lot or almost exactly like the tiles you would see in widgets, like I said. There's not a lot of configuration to this, unfortunately. If we go into the settings app, go to personalization and then lock screen, um, it's not even obvious that this is going to turn it on. So this is this particular computer just says weather. And if it just says weather, that means you only have that one tile. You don't have those other three. If it says settings or sorry, if it says weather and more, that means you could have two, three, or four tiles. Again, it varies by computer. This is what we deal with with Windows 11. Um, you don't have to have Windows Spotlight on. You can have your own picture there, but you have to you have to configure this to it will say weather and more is the the thing you're looking for. I just don't have it on this particular computer. Um, you can't say I want weather and finance, but not the other two. We you know probably in the next version of Windows or later on we'll have that, but right now it's it's fairly basic, unfortunately. And then the last one is, this one's a little, a little further out, but it will be coming, it's coming this summer. You'll see it soon, but um, because the interface it's tied to is so relatively unknown to people, I thought I would just point it out now anyway. Um, if you go into the settings app again, and this time go to system and then the power management interface, power and battery, there is a block up here at the top or an expander called energy recommendations. And the idea here is that, especially on a laptop, but this is also true of desktop computers, that uh, it examines the way your computer is configured and then it makes recommendations that will lower your carbon footprint, but maybe more important to you personally, will um, lower the amount of power that the computer consumes and make it work more efficiently, which can actually help with battery life. Uh, and it does through it does so very, very, uh, via this uh, set of steps, right? Now, this particular computer, and then plus just me the way I am, uh, I don't necessarily want to enable a lot of this stuff. Like uh, by default, Windows is configured to put it, the computer to sleep after three minutes, which I think is a little aggressive, also with the screen. So I actually manually changed those to something else. But you can go through this list and apply the ones that you want. For example, I can just put on dark mode is a great way to say a battery. Um, and that's fine. Um, but they're adding, uh, for, for computers like this that support HDR and in windows 11, 24 H2, and most likely other versions of windows, as we see, um, that support HDR background images, um, they're going to have HDR controls in here as well. And so HDR is the type of thing you might want to have enabled when you're on battery, uh, I'm sorry, when you're on power, but when you're on battery, you don't and so forth. And so there, there's going to be an HDR control in here um, as Microsoft um, puts the, that kind of capability uh, or makes that capability more uh, widespread in Windows. So that's what I have for now. Um, there's more, of course, there's always more. This uh, Microsoft Edge in particular is updated so often that there's always new features there. Um, we already know that in July and I'm sure in August and then moving forward from there, uh, I'm sorry, I should say, in, yeah, in 
August, actually, and then moving forward from there. Um, all three of the supported versions of Windows are getting more, you know, minor new features. You know, so there's always there's always more coming. But I thought kind of interesting mid-year here, we could just take a look. We're kind of between Windows releases, but there's always stuff happening because that's that's the way our lives are now. <laughs> So I hope you found this useful and interesting. Um, we'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more on at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you especially to our club Twit members. I'll see you next week. Bye.